Well, welcome home, neighbors, and welcome aboard to this special edition little mini show that Brian Flock and I put together. My name is Chad. I'm from My DVC Points, and I've got Brian with me tonight. Brian, how you doing? I am doing fantastic today. I think I loved your post. All of our wishes came true. So uh, we are we are having a great day from a Disney Cruise Line perspective. Yeah, I'm telling you because, well, through my technical, I guess, professional expertise as a call center technology guy, I was able to somewhat rope drop member services and got in like that to one of the, it was the agent's very first phone call of the day. Like, wow. <laughs> so fresh agent, fresh everything right at the eight o'clock bell and <laughs> just had a, a, a great time doing it. But you and I had talked about this a little bit ahead of time, but, and I had meant to create some content on how to rope drop member services, but I never really got around to like doing it and putting it out. So tonight I got some rough ideas that I'm going to share with people. And I think I'll come back later and create a real show on, on this as well, because Moonlight Magic, we have to do this. Fingers crossed that that's all coming back, right? And yep. so today for this DVC member cruise, we had to, and I'm sure there's going to be more member events and more special things that they do that they know they're going to get absolutely slammed. Well, and, and I can say without your help, I'm not sure we would be on this DVC cruise because it was, <laughs> it's a tale of two very different experiences here this evening as you did it a hundred percent right. And whatever we were doing was wrong. <laughs> so it, it was a rough, it was a rough morning at uh, 4.45 a.m. on the West Coast here. So, <laughs> Luckily for me, I set the alarm at 7.30, got up, kind of got some caffeine in me and, and was, was ready to go. But for my day job, there's days I can place 200 test calls a day in, into these phone systems, right? To just make sure all the systems work. So, I mean, this stuff is like, I got it down. Okay. I can yeah, hear yeah. the carrier messages and tell you what's going on. Like it, it's just kind <laughs> of a, a, a weird skill to have, but it paid off today. And so, yes, you know, I, I guess if I were to tell anybody, so my, my number one tip here is to come back in and put a speed dial on your phone because you're going to have to hit repeat, 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 repeat continually. And yeah, it's like buying the lottery. Okay. If you could imagine DVC probably has two to 300, maybe 400 incoming phone lines in their system. And that's what they can accept for, for calls. Now they probably only have like a hundred agents, but that's pretty good because you want people waiting in line so that when that agent finishes a call, boom, the next, the next piece of work for that agent is queued up and ready to go just, just instantly. So there's more lines than there are agents, but you've got to get an open line first. And then once you get an open line, you've got to navigate the IVR menus. And so my, my second tip here is use a landline if possible, because yep. I, I mean, working in the industry, cell phones drop and there's nothing worse than, you know, looking at a customer's call logs when they say we hung up on them and I go back in and like, no, your carrier clearly disconnected <laughs> looking at the logs here. Okay. Yeah. And the carrier disconnects like if you lose cell phone signal or something along those lines. So use a landline if possible because cell phone disconnects happen. And then luckily for us today, somehow we got disconnected. I don't know if their phone system flipped out. I don't know if it couldn't handle the load. I don't know if Verizon dropped my call, but we got disconnected from, from the agent. And luckily, you know, huge, huge, huge cast compliment to Reese over in, in DVC member services. Yeah. Because you know that you know when you call in, Brian, they ask you, hey, has anything changed on your phone numbers or emails? Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's important because it paid off today. Okay. Because <laughs> when it our did. phone call dropped, yeah. I was sitting here going, Oh crap. And then I was just going, it's a it's a call center agent. She's on to the next call. I, 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 that's I've, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought for sure like, after after I didn't get an immediate call, I, and I was sitting there going, oh, maybe I should stop dialing on this phone because maybe that's giving her a busy signal. I'm going to stop. And Sam is my wife is still dialing on her phone. Uh, yeah, I was so relieved when I saw that she had called you back because we were hearing stories from people that were already in a queue with like a an estimated weight weight of some three hundred and something minutes or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so. it's. 
it's crazy. And and if you're in queue and get disconnected, there's no callbacks there. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. But luckily the agent had my member number was doing this. And, you know, one little lesson learned here was I just happened to get in. And I mean, we had talked pregame ahead of time. We were like instant messaging today, like this morning during the call and the pre time. Okay. And she starts talking with me and she goes, now, did you want an adjoining suite? Is there another party joining you? And that's when I went, uh, adjoining suite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take one of those. I'm going to go with my buddy, Brian. Right? <laughs> She's like, oh, okay. Do you have his stuff handy? Or will you be paying for this for his room or, or will he be paying for it out of points? And I'm like, oh, he'll be paying for his own, but hold on. I'll bridge him in. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought the most the so we dialed I we looked at our phones afterwards and I've heard of people who dialed several hundred times before they got through. We dialed probably between my wife and I about 160 or 70 times. I think we counted or, or you know, it's tracked on our phone and we got through exactly six times between the two of us that it rang in. We got to do the menus and we would go through the menus and every time it would be like, sorry we're too busy call back later <laughs> hang up on us i was like i am losing my mind <laughs> trying to get booked on this cruise so yeah. okay so what that is is that's a max capacity step in the call flow that you've navigated the menu and um you've made it through there and rather than them just play a all you know all circuits busy that fast busy tone dvc has decided we're going to keep a few phone lines open to tell people you know, a, a more polite way of saying, hey, we heard you. We know you're here. So they keep a few lines open just to come back in and go up. Oh, cube capacity hasn't gone down any. You can't come into queue. Here's here's a disconnect message and, and go away. OK, call back yeah. later. Yeah. Well, so, and this was I mean, this was an impressive thing from just I mean, it was straight into welcome to DVC. Mm -hmm. You hit menu option one and there, you know, select English. And then it was welcome aboard, right? You have two choices, your platinum or you're booking the DVC cruise. Like that's it. So they had converted the system over and it was all hands on deck today to book those cruises. So, and it is evidenced by the fact that I heard concierge sold out first, not, not surprising. They're the smallest group of rooms on the ship. Although I was a little surprised by that, given the amount of points you got to spend to be in concierge. Uh, the concierge sold out first and then the whole ship is sold out now. So um, it was a successful day for DVC. <laughs> it was. I mean, I could have probably had a shot at it, Brian, like being the first person in. Okay. Yeah. But I was in, you know, as somebody who does this for a living, I think member services is one of the best call centers on the planet. Okay. And I have spent 30 years in this trade. I, I get a little jealous of people like accountants that can go anywhere with their skill set because I'm I'm a one trick pony. Okay. I do call center technology and, and it's like, this is my trick. Okay. <laughs> if it's anything <laughs> other than this, you know, I, I don't, I, I've got nothing. Okay. <laughs> so, but this is my trick and I, I performed it well today because the first time I called in, I kept getting the busy signals and I was like, okay, speed dial, right? Sooner or later, I'll win the lottery and get an open line. And then I started calling at like 7.55 to just come back in and hear the menus and see where they put the time of day check and notice, okay, scrap what I had mapped out for their other plans. Because one of my other tricks is on a normal day when they don't put up new menus for this, know what you have to hit in what order to come back in and just speed through those menus. Because if you're rope dropping member services and you've got the map here for the IVR all down, press one, press three, you don't have to wait for it to go and speak its whole deal. You can just press it and zoom right through. And right. that's the equivalent of rope drop at Magic Kingdom and everybody else is walking <laughs> and you're running back to, to Splash Mountain, okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's a great trip there just to put this into uh, DVC perspective, okay? <laughs> I just read Rebecca's comment here. Boo for accountants. I love accountants. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a little jealous that they can get jobs anywhere and everybody needs them. Okay. And uh, somebody here on Facebook dialed 160 times and rang in four times. And yeah, I, yeah. I, I, um, I heard for some folks, your point about the landline, the successes I heard early, uh, after the phones got busy, people started picking up every phone they had available 
and the landlines were the ones that got through. So um, I don't know if there's anything to that, but it makes me rethink whether I need a landline at my home just for these moments in time. <laughs> It's a lot of pay, you know, that <laughs> copper's not cheap any anymore. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so rare that they just jack the rates up like 50 bucks a month for this. And it's just like, holy cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you've got it available, you, th th that's that's the preferred option. Yeah. What What did you think of the uh, I'm curious, Chad. So you've booked now This is your first Disney cruise. I'm excited to uh, to to have well, it's you about on my and... fifth booking, Brian. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be my first Disney cruise. I actually get to go on, I hope. Oh, yeah. If 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 we're not sailing by next year, I think the world is is pretty much ended. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm curious what you thought about the uh, the points, Chad, for this cruise. Um, I, I've heard a few people who, you know, pro tip for folks out there who thought you had to book your lead guest i hope you asked because i booked my son to save a ton mm -hmm. of points so we're paying for cash for one and two um but what did you think about the points chart for this this cruise it's less expensive i, I heard than the member cruise from 2018 but um it's not an official member cruise so there's no yeah. swags they're not flying in all these other disney celebrities to come back in and entertain us and do all this stuff it sounds to me like they came in and, you know, Disney Cruise Line and DVC report up to the same, you know, president executive in the company. Okay. Yeah. So Signature it sounds services. like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it sounds like they got together and they said, hey, look, let's do something really cool for our members. And we're going to give the DVC people the second cruise here. And we're going to just like book the entire cruise. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So to me, it looked about normal on the point charts, maybe a little bit high. Yeah. But when you start looking at the charts and they're going, okay, for uh, a room you're looking at between 175 and 200 for the vast majority of them. And I think the one that we picked was like 192. Yeah, uh, it was, uh, what was it, a category, it's category 8B, which on the point chart is, yeah, 192 points for the first two guests. Yeah. And then how much for the, the child or the third guest? Uh, it depends, but so age 13 and over, you're at 116, age three to 12, you're at 112, and then chill, you know, two and under, you're at 101. So between around 115 on average there for those okay. are 113. Okay. Yeah. Cause I got a call back tomorrow and after I looked at this and went, well, you're bringing your kid. And I talked to a bunch of people from the community and like Robert Campbell's bringing two of his kids. And so I was like, Laura, all my friends are bringing their kids. We should like bring one of them. And yeah. <laughs> They got to go down the slide for the kids club. <laughs> that's just it. I, I need a cover to get into that kids club. Okay. <laughs> There's always an adult open house at the beginning of every cruise in the kids club. So we always go. We always love to check out the kids club space. And on the old ships, the which are not the old ships, I guess, uh, you, they have these amazing hand wash stations where you literally just for the kids, you stick your hands in these two holes. And they spray soap and hot water around and around to clean your hands. And when they're done, they tell you and you pull them out and they're dry and ready to go. So we like we like want these in our house. They're amazing. So the slide is now the attraction for the adult open house on the wish. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to it, Brian. I'm looking forward to it. And um, your wife, Samantha, says, I wonder if there will end up being some member swag. I think they're being super clear. There won't be. I, I could see them giving out some inaugural swag if they order enough for the second cruise i could see them doing that i uh, i can't see them not doing something here brian okay yeah inaugural yeah. cruise there's going to be something special about this it, it might not be the full-blown you walk into your cabin every single day and your bed's just covered with swag yeah th that we've heard about in photos in the past but i have to think that they're going to step up their game a little bit here because they know this is a captive audience and they know it's all DV, all DVC members. Yeah. I wouldn't even bet if they don't double down the amount of guides that are sailing on this ship to to work on add on itis while they're there. Maybe they'll have some great deals <laughs> to add on for sure. Uh, I the one thing I noticed that I thought was curious is the uh, the points chart did not include the newly announced tower suite. Not totally shocked by that, but I wonder if they actually booked it. And I wonder if what it might be is that the members get an opportunity to go through and tour it. Um, that could be really, really cool if that's the case. So, ooh, ooh, that's a great observation, Brian. And yeah, 
Yeah. I, I, I love Marianne's comment here. It's Disney. They're going to have swag <laughs> to sell. Okay. <laughs> Oh, they're gonna have they're gonna have inaugural season cruise swag for days on these ships. So uh, I will say, from a cruise line standpoint, the pro tip on swag is if there's something you want, go to the gift shop on day one because they run out of stuff very quickly, and you have no opportunity to buy it off the ship generally. So uh, unless they put it out in Shop Disney, you're not getting a hold of it. And pre-COVID, they really had nothing, you know, not a lot to speak of DCL related in the uh in shop disney and almost none of that was actually mm. then on the ships so we've tried a few times where we've gone in and we've seen something uh and you, you'll go up to check out and say well do you have this they say no they'll always give you this line we'll call this number and they'll help you out afterwards they will not i have called the line multiple times Pro tip. they are just n not allowed to sell stuff off the ship so wow so they're just doing a, a, a graceful disconnect is what we would call that in the call center <laughs> business right they're um, they're selling hope where there is none so <laughs> okay okay well that's pretty interesting there brian so um yeah i was a little shocked now the one thing i've got to do because like i said after i realized everybody else was bringing their kids and originally my wife like she just gets out of school teaching just in time to fly down there and do and do this and so my kids are in a different district from her, so they're still in school, but I made the case to pull one of them out and, and come with us. So now I got to call back to member services and grovel tomorrow and go, can you please change this to book, you know, my kid on points and let me pay cash for the other two? They'll, they'll almost, yeah. Well, the point switch, I don't, I mean, maybe they'll give you some grief. I can't imagine they would. It's Disney. Um, the, uh, the only, um, the only hassle you might end up with is if forever for whatever reason the ship is at its like capacity. Kid capacity. That's what yeah, I heard. they will they will um they will not allow you to add someone in the stateroom. But my guess is I've heard a lot of people sailing just two to a stateroom. So it doesn't sound like families or tons of families are necessarily go. I mean, there will be lots of families on the ship, but it doesn't sound like it's one of those sailings that will be wall to wall. Uh there's gonna be yeah. lots of just, you know, couples. So yeah, well, I mean, I looked at this and I was like, well, man, y your son's there right next door. My son's the exact same age. We have taken our oldest. I've taken her on a, you know, a trip with to New York City. I've taken her on a trip to Washington, D.C. She's been to Disney World like three times with just me alone. And so the other two are like, hey, where's our trips? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought this was a good idea to just take my son on this one and... So we'll see. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm hoping if we can pull it off, we're gonna have to pull him out of school like the last three days or something. And I was like, Laura, you're a teacher. You know, they don't learn anything the last three days of school. They're bouncing <laughs> off the wall, looking at the calendar and summer vacation. So, well, we're, we're pulling out our son out for, I think it's at least a week, if not two weeks early, because, uh, we have the, we have the maiden right before that. And we're taking him on that. So, um, it's, yeah, <laughs> we're like, sorry, you're missing school. It's the, parents of some DCL fans that you're just going to have to deal with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I've already heard from those, you know, like, like my daughter was going, but those were work trips because you work out of a DC and you went and I'm like, yeah, well, you know, I do this little podcast thing now and this is a work trip <laughs> as well. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, Chad, I got to ask, what are you most excited about? This is your first experience and it's on the wish. So like, what, what are you most excited about? I'm excited about trying it, Brian. I, I'm all, I almost went, do we need to try to like do the whole Brian and Chad are in one room and then the wives <laughs> are in the other so we can use your guys's <laughs> like power techniques to get us all at Palo and Remy or are you able to come back in and whatever the equivalent there is on these ships, are you able to like book a table for four for us or? Yeah, for, for, well, so the, the power trick would have yes would be to put one of us in each room uh because we're gold so we get a little bit better of a booking status and yeah you end up booking you can only book the people in your stateroom uh but we've done that before with a platinum cruiser actually who um came with us on an 11 night sailing that was almost completely platinum so by the time it was going to be our booking window like palo was already pretty much gone, gone. yeah and so uh, he ended up coming into our stateroom and we got to use his booking window. And so we, um, we got all kind of the reservations that we were hoping for. And um, so, yeah, it, that is the, that is the trick. If you're going to go with uh, folks who have higher castaway club status, you kind of 
put one in each room. And then at the port, you can kind of rearrange the rooms however you want. They don't care. Um, is how it works. So, hmm. well, I might have to make that ask tomorrow or something to see if we can yeah. get some kind of a, a, a yeah. deal going. Or I don't know if you book the two rooms, are the reservations linked somehow or? We can ask, we can ask to have them linked. So like for purposes of dining, then you sit at the same table. Um, you don't get grouped uh, separately. Um, so yeah, so you can link reservations together in their system. Okay, cool. So yeah. Yeah. So when they, when they call for payment, usually that's when I'll sort of say, Hey, by the way, can you link these two reservations up? We're already on the same dining, uh, you know, dining schedule. Uh, and we want to sit together and then um, for DVC members today, the, that sounds like that's also when they'll take your castaway club number. So you get credit for the sailing toward castaway status. So. Got it. Samantha says we'll book a table for two and then change it to a table for four. So <laughs> I like the way you think, Samantha. Yeah. And... Well, yeah, Sam and I have to uh, have to figure out if our favorite server is going to be on board the wish uh, and request him if we can, but uh, we haven't seen him now in 18 months. So we, uh, We'd love to see him again. So <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't know it. Well, I mean, you should have a new favorite because you're going to be there for the cruise right before this, Brian. So yes, yes, I, I we are we are so like I said, all the wishes came true this morning. Our travel agent. It was great because our travel agent told us she was on the phone with Disney for the maiden. And we were finishing up the call for DVC. So it worked out perfectly because I gave her the room number and she secured the same room for us on the maiden voyage. So we don't even have to move rooms. We just have to walk off the ship and walk right back on. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Man, that is so nice, Brian. That is, that is just all the cards just lined up. I, I you yes. know, it normally doesn't work out this way for me. So I'm a little shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little shocked. <laughs> well it's going to be a great experience you going to spend some time at the parks before you think or or are you going to just come down for the cruise actually brian my house will be done so oh right yeah so really laura's probably going to take off work on friday night and they're going to come down friday night and then we do we have a tuesday boarding right uh it's the fort the 14th is when the cruise departs right let me see. I believe so. I, I think it's a, a Tuesday to a Friday if I'm, I should I think probably that's know right. this. I think that's right. June, yeah, June 14th is a Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a yep. Tuesday to a Friday. So Laura and, and Lincoln, hopefully, will come down on Friday or Saturday, wherever we get cheap airfare. I'll pick them up at the airport, and we'll probably goof off at around Walt Disney World for a little bit, and I'll work Monday. And then we'll just, you know, Tuesday morning, get up and drive over. And... <laughs> Yeah. Come hang out at the house afterwards too. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, we're, I'm pretty excited. We managed to book our son on the points cause it leaves us some points to, uh, to play with for the, uh, the pre and post cruise. So, um, yeah, it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be great. I think it's going to be a, just a almost two week period of nothing but Disney. So it'll be fun. Yeah, that will be, <laughs> that'll be awesome. Right. And so Sam saying party at Chad's after you're the after party, Chad. <laughs> I am definitely the after party at this one. So you know, and my house is right next door to this open field. So I hadn't figured out how I'm going to like get a barbecue event and some extra tables or something like that. But it's, it's there and I plan on using that field <laughs> and <laughs> it'll be nice. done November, December ish. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that one as well. And yeah. Yeah. And then Rebecca says table for six, Willie and I can sneak <laughs> into some luggage and there you go. I mean. I was kind of shocked. I, I, you'll have to figure out. I know they're, they're your next live guest tonight, so you'll have to figure out if they got on the, the cruise or not and or yeah, if they even I'm, tried. I'm curious. I'm curious to, to, to hear. I know I know they were talking about trying to book something on The Wish when we talked to them last, so I'll be curious to hear where they are on that. And uh, uh, we'll have to try to do something uh, something while we're on the ship, Chad, to let folks know what it's like and how it's going. So uh, I'll have to figure that out too. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to. And by the way, if you are... We need to figure out like a Facebook group or something like that for just listeners of our shows. Okay. Yeah. Now I know there's a, a Facebook out group out there for everybody that's on it, but we need to, to, to form one. So be on the lookout. We'll be posting a link to that in both of our groups. If you're on this cruise and you listen to our shows, um, I will be bringing some swag. Okay. I can't <laughs> say what DVC is going to do, but I can guarantee you I'm bringing swag and I can almost guarantee you Brian's bringing swag. Oh, Cause I, I know Brian is a swag guy. <laughs> I've been 
What do you mean I'm a swag? <laughs> uh, I've been waiting a year and a half to bring some swag on board and get some magnets up on people's doors and things like that. So yeah, we're going to have some stuff to bring. It will be the suitcase we empty and give away to take all of the maiden stuff home with us. <laughs> They're hopefully going to leave in our state rooms. There you go. We'll we'll just have to haul it back to my house and ship it from there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the guy, <laughs> the, the guy with the neon logo sign in the background. Okay, <laughs> you can guarantee he's gonna have some killer swag on this trip. And well, yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what the swag is from. I'm I'm interested to see what they do for the maiden voyage because they usually give some nice stuff away. Although we have we have heard from a friend that uh, on some of the prior maiden voyages, if it wasn't nailed down, it walked off the ship. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see maybe what's left on the second cruise. Uh, wow, wow, yeah, I can't imagine doing that. But well, I I saw someone giving or not giving away by no means giving away, selling. Uh, you know, they sent travel agents those kits for the thirty minute. Uh, reveal that they did a few weeks ago. Okay. And um, it was like a vert, it was a ship model, but it had a VR experience associated with it, a wand with like some teas and some aromatherapy things and stuff like that. Anyway, someone's selling one on eBay. You want to venture a guess as to what they are asking for that? 700, kit? 800? $2,500. <laughs> so there you go. You want to piece of the wish you can go spend twenty five hundred dollars on ebay i find that to be just crazy so no no thanks no thanks i can live without <laughs> that one i can definitely live live without that one and yeah yeah jim mason yeah. says the swag bag becomes the souvenir bag which is kind of the plan right yeah, yeah. is yep. i can guarantee you we can be doing fish extenders and everything else and uh there will be a lot of swag to be had for anybody who wants it i don't think i'll be obnoxious handing it out but We'll definitely come in and, and get some swag going and yep, for yep. absolute sure. And probably even talk maybe the sponsors into creating some t-shirts with our logo and theirs on the back or something like that. So yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. going to work on that one as well. No promises yet, but uh, I'm going to be working on that one. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brian, what, what's your family looking forward to most on this cruise? Uh, I am really, so I'm really big on the adult dining side of things. And so um, I'm hoping we'll get a chance to try those out either on the maiden or on this cruise. Um, we'll have to strategize, Chad, because, you know, it's only three nights. So you, if you want to hit the three rotational restaurants, you have no opportunity for the adult dining, but might try to do a Palo brunch or something to try that out. That's a, that's like the pinnacle of Disney cruise line dining, I think is the Palo brunch. Everyone raves Hit about me. it. Like um, Italian steakhouse. So, Bring it. <laughs> so I'm really, I'm really excited to try the adult dining. And I'm, I am super excited actually for the Marvel restaurant and the uh, hyperspace lounge, the Star Wars thing. I oh, really want to see how they pull that off. If, if it can get anywhere close to Oga's, it's going to be phenomenal. Okay. Yeah. I think so, it has a chance to be better than Oga's if they can get like, I think if they just tone down the food and the drink just, just a little bit, I think it could be really fun i'm um, messing with my fuzzy tauntaun now okay <laughs> like mm -mm. so uh and sam is excited i think for the shows they haven't revealed the final two shows that are going to be on the wish and she's a big broadway fan so she is excited to see the show so that's going to be her her big thing so um i think she's looking forward to that and i can't wait to do i guess it's a, for us it'll be a double dip since it's back to back we'll get two stops at castaway key which is always a fun time as well so yeah, no kidding. And I know Robert from the Campbell Chronicles, he joined us today and, and he's booking and he will be there. And so nice. he's saying Hyperspace Lounge all the way. Robert, I'm going to buy you a drink at Hyperspace Lounge <laughs> and just to hang out in because, you know, we're, we're friends and all that. And he says totally has a, a Canto Bite type of feel from number eight. And yeah, I'm not following that reference there, but I guess somebody might. <laughs> 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 yeah i'm looking forward to the lounge i'm looking forward to it all because i have heard nothing but like guests on the show come in and talk about this and talk about this and just on and on and on and on and now i'm looking at it going okay i finally get to do one and when i bought these 325 direct points i bought them for the experience Explicit purpose of using on a DVC member cruise one day or a DVC special cruise that was only available through points. And so I'm so glad that I did. I'm so glad that I had the points, that I saved them for this reason. 
and it just kind of worked out and well be careful it's my it is one of the most addictive disney experiences i've ever i've ever had so <laughs> once you go on disney cruise line it's hard not to want to go back the only thing i can tell you brian is i got a house in florida that florida <laughs> resident rate yeah. is like right there within grasp okay yeah yeah <laughs> and you can you can juice your castaway club status really fast if you're a florida resident because you can do little three night sailings you know the four night sailings double them up you know it you'll you'll be platinum in no time chat <laughs> yeah yeah that's if it becomes an addiction we'll see okay we'll we'll have to see on that one as well and yeah i can just tell you i'm i'm looking forward to it i'm thinking we should get some like special breaking news and announcements on that cruise as well i i think we'll this is just my prediction i think we'll be getting some dvc news perhaps like some some breaking news on Disneyland Tower there. Yeah. I think they should at least treat this like it's a D23 event, okay? And at least have some some news or some something going on in the theater for us. So I can't see them wasting this opportunity to come back in and just throw the members something. Yeah. Might not be a full-blown member cruise. I get it, okay? I completely get it, but it still should be something. And that's what I'm looking forward yeah. to. Yeah, I, I would love it if they were selling uh, the Disney Tower on this cruise because the incentives on the cruise ship are actually really good. And they you know usually give you a little something extra for buying on the cruise. So that that would be a great time if that tower is actually going to go on sale. It'd be a great time to, to buy in. Yeah. Or, hey, you were on the cruise, you put money down. Yeah, who knows? Like, from what I can tell, they really haven't even like broken ground over there from our boots on the yeah. ground. So, yeah. To say they'll be in pre-sales in a year from now, I don't think so, but I think they'll be doing some pre-announcement hype. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I hope. I hope. And maybe maybe we'll hear something about, uh, you know, this. the wishes uh, for sailings are two years out from what should be the next ship. So maybe we'll start to hear just a little inkling of what they're going to do with that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. We could be getting some some tips on the next cruise as well. So, yeah. But yeah, I'm hoping this goes well, Brian, because if it does, we'll definitely be rinse and repeating this for whatever the next ship is called. And don't we have two more coming? Two more. Two, two more as it stands, uh, hoping that that doesn't change based on kind of, you know, the financial situation that Disney Cruise Line's probably in at the moment. Uh, but they haven't said anything about cancellation. So they remain on the docket for Mayor Werft uh, to build. Uh, so we're hoping we're hoping for two more yeah. ships. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it would make sense because they, they eventually need to, I, I, I've been telling people you need to start mentally preparing yourself for the magic and the wonder to be retired. I'm not saying they're going to retire them this year or next year, but these, these two new ships that are coming after this one, I think are really to start to replace the existing fleet, not necessarily expand it. Um, so we may hear more announcements about even more ships coming, but got to start mentally preparing that the magic and wish are reaching kind of, they're, they're pretty long in the tooth these days. Uh, they can go through some more refurbs. They, probably got another five years in them at least but uh sooner or later those ships do get retired so yeah brian now like last night we heard from somebody that was saying if this cruise didn't sell out to dvc members they were going to open it up for cash did you hear anything about that was i i didn't hear that. I, I i sort of my gut reaction was this would sell out there were enough points around that people were going to want to spend and you know, I've heard some people say, well, it's not a great point opportunity. That's right. It's no, terrible it's from what? Well, yeah. We, well, I view it as a great point opportunity from the standpoint that you get to like these sailings for the inaugural first, what is it? Three months. I think they've released the sailings. They're going to get substantially sold out, I think, to platinum and gold, uh, maybe silver, although DVC leapfrog silver in the booking process uh, this time around. So There'll be something left by the end of this, I think, uh, but not a lot. And so I think this was an opportunity for members to really get booking priority on a cruise, uh, regardless of their castaway club status. I think that yeah. made it worth it. So, I mean, here I am. I've never been on one before, but I was the first guy in line at member services booking, right? Right there at opening bell. Okay. Yeah. Right yeah. to the agent. So... That says something, okay? That that really says the DVC did something. And we're in this year where everybody's looking at this and going, what's the benefits of having a blue card? Well, this cruise was a huge blue card benefit. Yeah. 
Now, granted, they're only paying us eight fifty a point, and our sponsor, DVC Rental Store, pays sixteen a point for running out your points at the eleven month window. So they've moved it up from last year. I think it was around seven forty a point. So they, they they've increased it this year on quite a bit, but still eight dollars and forty cents a point. That barely covers our dues, and it doesn't at Hilton Head and Vero. So we don't even know what 2022 dues are going to look like, so it might not even cover the dues at more in 2022 for the points we had to use to book this cruise. So yep. we'll, yeah. fi we'll, fi we'll find out, okay? Yeah. I mean, it was interesting that they required the booking this time with points. Um, th I thought that was really interesting. I do think mm -hmm. that was kind of calculated in some way. Uh, to really make people think hard about whether they wanted to go on the cruise or not a little bit. Um, but I think it was a complete uh, blue card benefit deal to saying, Hey, yeah. you know, like, like Robert says here, it's the second sailing. This is the only reason why I would spend points on a cruise yeah. is we get to come in and do something right behind people who have been on 25 cruises, right? So so what you said earlier today was people who have been on 25 or more cruises have already booked up 30% of that ship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, that yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That's that's the rumor at least. <laughs> and so DVC members are like bumped up in priority and I got I got to hand it to DVC execs and leadership. Y'all threw us a great bone on this one. And yeah. Because we've been complaining, saying, hey, where's our benefits? Where's our benefits? Where's our benefits? There's no annual passes. Okay, what's up with this? Well, here was our, our huge major benefit, and I'm really happy to have it and really, really thankful for the decisions that leadership made in all of this. So yeah, yep. can't can't say enough great things about it. And, and if I didn't think so, I would respectfully point that out as well, Okay. Cause that's just who I am on the show and, and I always want to be respectful, but I always want to be authentic and honest. So, okay. Yeah. Any final thoughts tonight here, Brian, before we wrap up tonight's show? Just pure joy for once, pure joy coming out of our household after a long slog of a year. Uh, we're feeling really excited. In fact, I said to someone today, like, I'm not sure I can maintain this level of excitement <laughs> until the ship sails, but uh, we're excited. We just can't wait. Can't wait to see you, meet you. We've got some listeners who are going to be on the ship. Can't wait to meet them. So it's going to be fantastic. Can't wait. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it the entire time around. And Sam already gave me a warning on the phone today. She's a hugger. And I'm like, I'm fully vaccinated, <laughs> Sam. I'll be there with both arms open. Okay. We have and... a friend who works at the uh, the National Institutes of Health. And he, he said, you know, if you're fully vaccinated, give your friends a hug. You know, hug them a little longer. Make it weird. So. <laughs> <laughs> know about that part but <laughs> <laughs> and brian is saying um or robert says agreed brian i don't know how long we can keep it from the kids and uh, i told oh, we kept it today. from our son yeah we, yeah we kept it from our son for all of 30 minutes and then we told him we're going on nikki's newest boat <laughs> he's really excited so <laughs> Okay. For the benefit of my listeners, Brian, where can people find you, follow you, listen to you on podcast and learn more about Disney Cruise Line and, and sailing with, with DCL? Sure. We're the, the DCL duo. You can find us on all the major podcasting platforms under DCL duo. Uh, you can follow us on uh, all social media at DCL duo, except for Instagram. We relate to the game. So we're DCL underscore duo over there, or we've got a YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash DCL duo. So yeah, come follow us. So we've got a lot of great content out there. Yeah. And I know on iTunes, we figured out it's DCL space duo and that did like right. amazing things for your guys' search results. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yes. We are doing much better on search now because of that, that, that little, that just that space, it added it. <laughs> that kind of cleaned things up. So anyways, thank you so much for joining us today, Brian. And thanks for having us. I, I look forward. We're going to have to like hang out before your cruise when you're in Walt Disney world as well. Cause I'll be there. So awesome. Awesome. <laughs> See you then. Okay. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a great night.